Much for the recent by-elections in Zimbabwe were viewed as a preview of the 2023 elections uh, with the op opposition hoping to end ZANU-PF's reign since the 1980s and the long-delayed parliamentary by-elections, the Citizens Coalition for Change. Now Zimbabwe's leading opposition party won 19 of the 28 National Assembly seats. Joining us to discuss their victory is Fadzai Mahere. She's the spokesperson of the Triple C. Uh, welcome back to Newsroom Africa, Fadzai. Very good morning to you. Uh, let's start with congratulations. Uh, how was election day and how was the, the victory received? Well, as the Triple C, we're extremely uh, proud that the citizens came out in full support of this brand new baby, and we managed to transfer some PF and the MDC in both parliamentary and council elections. However, we remain extremely concerned by the conduct of the electoral management body. Even though we won, we did so despite the odds. The voters' role was absolutely shambolic. There were lots of incidents of vote buying, especially in rural areas. Uh, in the pre-election phase, state media was extremely partisan and rigged against uh, our party, our movement, the Triple C. We had huge incidents of violence and even lost one of our members in Bonini Mube. Our rallies were banned. So election day, especially election day, results day, it was mixed feelings. Mm. We're obviously happy because the election showed that we've got the capacity uh, to beat zanu PF in an election, but there's also a lot of work to be done to ensure that the electoral playing field is fair, and also a lot of work to uh, ensure that the full vote comes out so that we beat our target of 6 million votes. Yeah, I mean, the, the vote buying has been mentioned even uh, uh, by the Zimbabwe Election Support Network. Uh, regarding that, Chamisa came out and said you would have won more seats had it not been for that. What do you uh, make of that? Uh, and, you know, how do you prevent or how do you, how do you, you safeguard against this uh, for next year in particular? Well, what President Chamisa said is absolutely correct. Uh, we had an incident in Mutasa South, which is a rural cons constituency in Manikland, where the headman was actually the one who was mobilizing people and going to assist them and giving them an agent to assist them to go and vote. In wards like Ward 41 in Mabuku, we had people being given all sorts of trinkets. In Epworth, uh, Zanu PF on the day and the day before was giving out soap. Now, the way to solve this is for political parties to comply with the code of conduct uh, that has been uh, implemented or not implemented but imposed by the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, there's a clear code of conduct that says that vote buying is illegal. In fact, it's contrary to our electoral law. So if we had an electoral management body that was serious about enforcing these regulations, we would see a freer and fairer playing field. It's an offense to vote by even on election day, it's absolutely shameful. We also have the twin problem of people coming to the polling station on polling day and simply not finding their name in the voters' roll. This was a huge problem in Epworth where Zanu PF purports to have won. Uh, you can't win when the, the game, the rules are completely rigged and the referee is picking up the ball and throwing it out when the other side is about to win. It simply doesn't work like that. But somehow, Fadzai, you, you've managed to pull it off here. Um, a landslide victory that uh, uh, President Chamisa calls it. Uh, now, could this raise concerns for possible uh, political instability, more political instability and violence, um, with, with uh, ZANU-PF looking to claw back their way in this? Well, what we know is certain is that ZANU-PF can never win a free and fair election in Zimbabwe. This is why they resort to intimidation, to harassment, to violence. This is why they beat our supporters up for simply wearing yellow. This is why they abuse the police service to ban our rallies. This is why they resort to all sorts of, uh, you know, dirty tricks, uh, including abusing the electoral management body to ensure that they rig their play the playing field in, in their favor. Now, what we know is that there's absolutely nothing that can stop an idea whose time has come. The huge momentum that the Triple C has enjoyed is because the citizens of Zimbabwe are absolutely sick and tired of the suffering that's been caused by uh, ZANU-PF. We've got 49% extreme poverty. We don't have a s single functioning cancer machine in any of our hospitals. Our teachers are incapacitated and not being paid a living wage, and so children are not going to school.
What do you make of... Uh, the cost of living has skyrocketed. Uh, sorry, continue. I thought uh, you had stopped talking there, but we just seem to be uh, suffering from an uh, interruption in, in network. But go, go ahead. Sorry, my apologies. So I was just saying that Facebook the suffering Zimbabweans are ready uh, to vote ZANU-PF out. And if you look at the few months uh, that we've been uh, on the campaign trail, the clear message that the citizens are sending is that they are sick and tired of ZANU-PF. So we're confident that if we continue to fight for electoral reforms, if the citizens come together, we will certainly remove ZANU-PF from power in 2023. And then how ready is, the, is your party? How ready is Triple C to govern? Triple C is absolutely ready to govern. We are a citizen-driven uh, movement that believes in the philosophy of putting the citizens first in all areas of uh, decision-making. We have got, uh, you know, the leaders with the best competence. We believe in ethical leadership. Uh, some of the people who are part of our movement now have got an excellent track record in government, looking at the work that uh, President Chamisa, Minister Beattie, uh, you know, Senator Coltart, etc. did when they were part of the, the unity government just shows that we have got the experience when it comes to running a government that puts the citizens first and ends the suffering in Zimbabwe. So we are ready to govern. We have got the alternative policies, the manifesto that can actually put Zimbabwe back on the right track. You know, Zimbabwe is not poor, as you know. And Zimbabwe is poorly managed. Zimbabwe has got all the resources and all the ingredients it needs to succeed. And what we are keen on doing is just facilitating, you know, an environment where citizens themselves can thrive, where we end the poverty, we end the injustice, we end the corruption, and just give Zimbabweans a Zimbabwe where, you know, they don't have to, you know, get water out of a, a community borehole. They can open a tap again. They've got functioning roads. They've got food on the table. Children can go to school. That's simply what we're after, ensuring that Zimbabweans can get a better life. I know the last time you, uh, we spoke, uh, you had uh, said that the leadership structures in the party will still be confirmed. Um, looking at the former opposition party, we've seen a lot of infighting between leaders, which have caused trouble, if I could say, for the former opposition party. Uh, should there be any concern regarding this within Triple C? Within Triple C, there is no infighting. <laughs> I think the leaders are all putting their shoulders to the block and ensuring that we all do the needful. In fact, our focus at the moment is not uh, position speaking and jockeying. It's really about delivering a Zimbabwe uh, where all citizens can have freedom, fairness and opportunity. Obviously, there is a caretaker leadership in place that's going to steer the movement. But the, 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 the key thing with the Triple C is we want to do policy politics differently. The priority is not about a, a leadership position as an individual, but it's about delivery. It's about going back to the communities and making sure that we demonstrate ethical leadership right at that gross, grassroots and community level. So it's not about having an elite pact right at the top, but it's, ensure, it's about ensuring that in rural communities, in villages, in towns, in cities, we've got triple C, you know, community leaders stationed everywhere that are sharing the message of hope and inspiration. So that's what we are prioritizing at the moment. We don't want that typical business as usual politics that the country has been, you know, experiencing over the last um, two to four decades, which hasn't delivered uh, a Zimbabwe that we can be proud of. We really want to ensure that this time the voice of the citizens comes first. People are heard. People are consulted on all issues. People participate, you know, at every single level. People choose the leaders they want to represent them. And that way we can start modeling the sort of leadership you would see under a Triple C government. Triple C currently very bullish at the moment. ZANU PF will be licking their wounds, looking to consolidate, looking to be resurgent for 2023. In regards to that, uh, particularly in regards to the rural vote, uh, what do you make of you know, ZANU PF's chances uh, you know, to look at the other side of the coin of them actually mounting a, a sort of fight back, if I can call it that? As I've said before, they would never win in a free and fair election. So we know they're going to resort to their 
you know, default dirty tricks of intimidation, harassment, vote buying, abusing traditional leaders, abusing the police service, but we're ready for that. Uh, already this last by-election on the 26th of March showed that the C has made huge inroads in what was traditionally MDC territory, what was traditionally ZANU-PF territory. I'll give you the example of Benga, which is a rural constituency in Masabella North, where we won by, you know, 10,000 votes. That's huge for a rural community where Mr. Mnangagwa himself had, number one, banned our rallies, number two, given the villagers free bicycles, number three, gone himself as the leader of Zambu PF to run a rally there. You know, you would have expected that those citizens would have been, you know, persuaded to vote for him, but they didn't because they're sick and tired of the suffering that they experienced between elections. You don't give a citizen a bicycle the day before election day and think that everything's going to be okay. That's not how you govern. Mm. And the citizens aren't fools. You know, they know, uh, you know, who their leaders are. They know the leaders who've got their interests truly at heart. Okay, Fazai. So uh, currently Parliament's still in control of uh, ZANU-PF. Uh, what does, you know, this by-election victory do for you and mean for the country in terms of governance? Well, thank you for that. Uh, what this by-election really was, was a test run for us to establish the readiness of, Z of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission to run an election number one, to test the ground uh, in terms of how the Triple C as a brand new baby that's two months old is being received, and number three, to test the model of citizen participation and citizen leadership when it comes to uh, establishing a political movement and I think on all three of those fronts we've we very much succeeded we've managed to expose uh, you know the partiality uh, and capture of ZEC, which is shambolic. We've said time and again they should act constitutionally or be disbanded. We've also managed to establish that the electorate wants the triple C to lead. I mean getting 19 uh, out of 28 seats in an election that is heavily skewed against us, where our rallies are banned, where our supporters are being murdered and beaten, where the police is banning our rallies and, uh, you know, uh, torturing people for campaigning and for wearing yellow to win despite those odds is a big thing. And we're going to continue to push that and to push electoral reform. Mm -hmm. And then the third issue really is to also strengthen our own processes. You know, the big thing for the triple C is to be able to defend the vote. And the one game changer that this election had that previous elections didn't have um, when it comes to participation is having is ensuring that there are polling agents at every single polling station where an election is being held. And we've managed to do that. So we've demonstrated that the capacity is there. So it's just about tightening that model and making sure that we strengthen it to ensure that there are no leakages whatsoever. And there's no scope, you know, for uh, ZANU-PF to rig the election when it comes to 2023. Fadzai thank you so much for making time for us this early in the morning. She's a spokesperson for thank the you. Citizen Coalition for Change in Zimbabwe. Uh, just chatting to us about those recently concluded by elections. Right. Up